All right. Welcome everyone to Teller 360 round two. Um, okay, so I guess I'll make my screen bigger. They don't need to see all you guys. Okay, so we're gonna kind of go over, this is really an open discussion for any of the changes that we had made, any of the ones that we had proposed, um, but we're trying to finalize it. Um, if you guys remember the basics of it, you know, we want, how do we get more users? How do we get more decentralized and secure? It's like, the, the, that's what we're doing. Um, but the bigger thing is too, like, we're not, this, this isn't a time, I guess you could say like, we're not going to redesign the whole protocol either. So like, we're not, we're not throwing out like pie in the sky ideas. Like let's move to, you know, or we'll, we'll make our own blockchain and do ZK roll up commits onto Ethereum. It's like, no, like that's, that's years and years away. Like how can we tweak the system? And we like the system. It, it seems to fit what most users should need. Um, how can we just sort of make it better and more usable? Um, so that's where we're going. And, and we also, you know, we have, we've been up and running live for like what, two and a half years, probably three years by the time this thing was going. Like that's some good battle hardened code like that that's out there on the solidity, on the solidity side. And, and as much of that as you can keep is such a huge deal. Like, you know, like if, if you're rewriting whole contracts and, you know, all the logic within there, um, it's bound to have some issues and you're, you're going to have bugs. Um, the other thing too, I actually really like, you know, so we're, we're planning on move. The first big change is obviously we're moving to Tellerflex on mainnet. Um, so it's, it's going to look like all of the other chains. And it's sort of cool in that we, we basically have been testing Tellerflex in a lot of ways over on other chains. It's been like, you know, sort of like a small test net, if you will, that, that we've been doing. And so like whenever we, you know, like we had actually talked about some other structures for like, what do we do if you can't bridge TRV over? Um, I think these are actually structures that we're going to play around with in the future too. But like we, we could move to the Teller 360 where you do bridge TRV over and then play around with those other ideas and possibly have two or three different systems on different chains, ones that we're sort of testing out and we'll want to move to make it the official one once, you, once we realize it works and there aren't any obvious bugs or downsides <laughs> that we can't foresee. Um, so keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, we'll just kind of go through the big changes. Um, any questions so far? What am I? All right, so first one, uh, flex on mainnet. Any problems? I don't think so. Um, the cool thing, it's, you know, the bigger piece of this is, is what it leads to. Um, and this is actually removing upgradability. Upgradability. Okay. It's like a much bigger word than you think it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Removing upgradability. So, like, what we have to think about for both our users and for um, kind of ourselves too is like, what are the big attack vectors that you can break Teller? You know, you, you, can, you can dispute every single piece or, or mine every single query ID. And that, that basically censors it. That's a big deal. Um, but it's not that big of a deal. You could censor it on the chain level. And the other cool thing about that is if you, if you just censored every ID by disputing it, you break one price feed. Like, you know, so like if Ampleforth was censored, Liquidity doesn't care or all of the Polygon network, all of the feeds on Polygon don't care. You know, like you, you actually, it's fine. Like you can, you can go censor it, you can break it. And that, that's actually a really cool feature in that like, 
you know, it's similar to like if one Uniswap pool gets flash loaned and attacked, the other Uniswap pools actually don't care at all. Um, so having that, uh, you know, that those attack vectors where like you can attack a single ID and there's a cost to do it, but it doesn't actually affect the other attack, attack vectors is, is really big. So the main risk right now is we have upgradability. We can mint a bajillion tokens, make the staking tokens worthless. You can update and just make reads or the token non-transferable. Bunch of things you could do to really mess with the system and just completely break it. Um, we want to get rid of that. The other, the questions that we may still have though, would be like changing variables along these lines. Global state variables, big rules, right? Well, like, you know, you, you can remove all the upgradability, but the question, you know, like even until it flex, like, how do we change the stake amount? Mm -hmm. Do we want to be able to change the stake amount? Do you have just limits to changing it? Like, can you only double it once every month at most or something? You know, like, because like you could break Teller by like, you put the stake amount to zero, Teller's broken. Yeah. Um, like a maximum stake amount to zero. Well, you could have a max, but then like, let's say our token price goes to 10 cents. I mean, do we just assume Teller's broken then anyway? Maybe. Um, like, what's the minimum? You know, like, let's say Teller's token price goes to 10,000. Like, do we, we probably don't care anymore, but we can, <laughs> we, we can at least entertain the idea of, like, can we lower this? Because, you know, if it's $10,000 and the staking amount is 100, like, nobody's staking. <laughs> like, you're never going to get any staker. So you want to lower it. And so, you know, do you automate these? Um, or do you have changing addresses? So you just fix it and then you launch a new Tellerflex, a new Oracle contract with a new variable. How does that work for users? Are they in charge of doing that? Because you could still say staked on that one, but assuming we change the stake amount, maybe. <clears throat> is So does that mean like complete forking is an option for the Oracle? Well, I mean, it always is, you know, like you could, like with the Oracle addresses, you can change it and like, you know, if, for new users, you could put it over there and people could stake on their current one and yeah. and you could still report on the other ones, but assuming it's like a changing of, the reason you're doing that is the changing of a variable of some sort. Forking can be precarious because it could split, um, like not liquidity, we don't have liquidity, but like the tension between contracts that have different- uh, It would, but it, it would, I don't think it would be as big of a deal. Right. Um, you know, we don't have like the problem like Uniswap where the liquidity split. It would sort of split some attention, but you would hope like some of those protocols would slowly move over for sure. as time goes on. What was like the main thinking going into picking these stake amounts? Did you guys like work out like, oh, it needs to be this because sellers at this price or did it just kind of- A little bit, yeah. I mean, you, you look at just, you calculate out like, okay, well, if, if it's at this price and this is the block time on the network, what's the cost to sort of censor it? What's the cost okay. to break it? Um, you know, faster block times means more reports, so you'd want a lower stake amount. Um, mm -hmm. But then if it's slow block times, you would want a much higher stake amount because you just can't, it would be much cheaper to sort of censor it and block all the other stuff. You gotta change like depending on someone reporting the price of TRB. Well, that's what I mean. You could just tie it, like that would be like the automating. So like yeah. uh, in US dollar terms, so you could fix it at like, the stake amount is a thousand dollars. How much is it? You know, and then this could potentially work. Like if you did want to ever move away from TRB as a staking asset, it could be the exact same. You would just have to have that price feed as well. Um, okay. What about automating it based on the number of stakers, like you do with the dispute feed? Is that well? I mean, it's it's hard because like they're, they're especially in Teller Flex, like there isn't like a number of stakers type thing. Because like you know your one address can have fifty stakes. Oh, sorry, you don't do that in Tellerflex. In Teller so you know you wouldn't. And, and like if you know if you had a billion feeds, or you know like ten thousand feeds, there are people needing different contracts. Like you'd need a whole bunch of stakers, and that's good um, as long as there's demand. You would want it. So I think I'd probably move towards automating it in some way. Yeah. Um, it's scary because I mean, this is the same with like, so we'll talk about doing the governance with 
bringing the snapshot vote in to the Oracle, you know, it's, there's like this weird cyclical loop yeah. where you're like plugging into yourself and it kind of makes the TRB USD people giant attack that thing as well. It does, but you know, you, you would at least be protected somewhat. You would mostly just be able to censor it. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, so but the question, the bigger question for these is like, you know, I guess you would have like, I guess it would work in Teleflex because you would just basically like how many stakes do you have and it would be divided on, you know, you have this amount locked. So like if you have $1,000 locked and it's a $1,000 stake, you report once every 12 hours, you have $2,000 locked, it's once every, you know, six hours. And then if, if the price goes down, you just lose the ability to report as often, right? I mean, it would be a giant, it would be a little bit of an attack factor. There's a way like if you report a bad price and then it tank, and then the price tanks and cuts in half before the, you know, you're disputed, then like you're not sort of blocking up as much. Like if someone reports a super, super like one cent value to TRB, it would knock out all the reporters of the contract to use that to determine the stake amount. That would be really tough, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, I would I would probably make it like a really, really slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's based upon you know, make sure that never right. Like it's based on a 12 hour old TRP value. Um, you know, like it, it's not moving fast and and that's okay. I think reporters react often. I understand that when, when you already have over well, you would ex amount, yeah, you would yeah. expect them just to leave the over amount in, like a little bit of buffer room for the reports. But they turn them in this game and then we see why they would do that and then just you know every randomly just see them themselves being at the state basically well i mean that's like if the price goes down a lot so like if you would stake you know two thousand dollars to go to completely unstaked the price would have to fall by over 50 percent so you know you're still so there's so if i'm a reporter and i have a thousand dollars in trb in there and then all of a sudden, TRB drops in price. What happens to me? You can't report until you can't morning. Report. So then, just by our price decreasing, we could basically like hold you the whole system. Well, you would hope that people would just put more money in. It would actually act. How fast does that work? Like how how like how when we upgrade and change these variables, how would quickly? We've only gone down, so it's but easy because it, we're like we we used to stake five hundred. We're going to one hundred. That's easy. You're still staked. But the game but theory would actually be nice for the price because, like, mm -hmm. it would actually be sort of stabilizing for the price in a way because, like, if the price goes down, then reporters have to buy more to keep reporting. But if the price goes up, now they have some to sell, and so it would sort of act as a, a buffer, which I like. I see that, but I don't see how fast. Reporters will be to actually restake or up their stake. To be able to yeah, but I mean, you could work on just making that, that that's like making sure that there's liquidity available wherever it is. Um, but Don't we have to run a function to actually stake. It's another thing that happens. Yeah, but that's super quick to stake. Like you can do that instantly. Mm -hmm. Unstaking is what takes time. So another it will be built into Teliot automatically. No, because you don't want Telia you doing market orders. <laughs> no, but they could have like a purse or something there. Sure. Because otherwise, we're like. Or you can just stake over. I mean, whatever you think it is, you would just stake more. Maybe um, like have a variable reporter time lock when things change instead of unstaking. I would like, yeah. That gives them 12 hours to restake or a day to up. There. What do you mean? Or I was thinking like um, if the price halves, then instead you might have to wait 24 hours now every time instead of 12, instead of unstaking. Oh, well, so it could just always be variable. Yeah. Yeah. So you could, well, no, it's like, downside is that it's just but you wouldn't want you somebody to put a $1 stake in and be able to stake once a year. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Well, well you, might, if you might not ha um, have to allow that, but rather like still enforce that people stake. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Assuming one dollar could be hundred TRB. Well, no, like yeah, like if if, right? if, like if it's completely variable on the time, then it's like you know you 
you price could have drops, like systems really slows down. Yeah. Well, if the price drops, the system really slows slows down for another reason, which is uh, reporters are getting paid by auto pay contracts. Those payments are cut in half also. So reporters are going to slow way, way down anyway because they're not going to be getting paid. In some ways, but then also like we've also seen, especially on Ethereum, when our price drops, usually the Ethereum price drops too when gas prices go down. So it's like mm -hmm. some, sometimes it's a okay. Um, on another note, I wonder like what the automation process would be. So I guess like when it, the first comes to mind is like ample fourth by rebasing. Yeah. We're not rebasing. No, I know. But <laughs> alternatively, there's like automated with governance, but even I feel like on some sets it requires being like an external function. I would just say like it all. fix it a thousand bucks. It's a 12 hour old TRB price all the day, something like that, you know. But like someone's calling the function, right? To update it? Yeah. No, I mean, you could just, it reads the current TRB price and then people can update it whenever they want. So like safe, external, callable? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, it wouldn't have to be updated, but. Oh, yeah, I see. You might want, to. yeah, so. Um, cool, that's useful. Would we, would we want to dampen the adjustment? So like, uh so if like the trb price cuts in half instead of re requiring like double the stake amount we like dampen that we target a certain amount but like it goes down to like now you need you know one and a half times um just just to minimize the influence of yeah but i mean that's someone. like saying that the trb price is going to go down by half in 12 hours like it could but i mean that's like it's like a super extreme scenario that I think like hopefully these guys so how many you want people be on a mission with like me like on 12 hours. Okay. Yeah. If, if the price goes down, stake. you got 12 hours to go buy some more TRB and keep staking. So every 12 hours we need the price of TRB on whatever network. Yeah. And I mean you could use some of the rewards from the auto pay to go towards updating that or um and I mean to be honest, I bet you would expect them to be. The reporters would like sort of probably automate it themselves to remove competitors. <laughs> if they're the flush one with a bunch of TRB sitting there, they'll probably want to keep that price nice and fresh so that way um, the other reporters don't have as many stakes if it goes down, you know. Or if you don't have that much, then you would want to make sure that you you do update the price. If the price is going up, so then you have more reports. Um, so that there would probably be some sort of competitive aspect so to it. Get 12 hours because they would know the price. Yeah, it would be. So they get 12 hours to react. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, How do we like, so we have liquidity, have they like hard coded in? The everything's hard coded there. So like what happens when we switch? How do we like try to? I mean, for them, like them and Ampleport, they're hard coded on like the current address. It's not even the Oracle address. It's the Isn't current. Is that just going to run out the TRB, like to fund that, fund people reporting that price? I mean, there's no TRB to pay that. People reporting it now. Wait, they didn't pay by inflation early words. So, yes, they will eventually run out and they will have to start paying. Yeah. They continue to use that contract. Oh. And actually, the way that they're structured, they probably have to de deploy their own out of pay. Eventually, we would take the inflationary rewards. No, I mean, yeah, because how else are they, if we don't give them inflationary rewards, how else are they going to pay them? Huh? Yeah, I mean, they would want to. Or they would want to have to. Uh, well, they'll use our auto pay. Yeah. Or eventually so. update the system. If, if we deploy this new teller on mainnet, does teller X go away or do you keep teller X? Also, it just runs out of money. No, I mean, tell, what do you? What part of TellerX? Like TellerX is sort of evolving into this in a way. TellerX as uh, mm -hmm. like the, Oracle, the Oracle contract. And no, yeah. So those would be gone. Okay, they're gone. Yeah. So you guys would it would be like switching to a new address. Well, wow. reporting to, and then like I think for Liquidity and Ampleforth, who are currently on the, they're reading from the token address, which falls back to the Oracle address. Gotcha. For them, you would basically just change what that fallback is going to 
to oh, you can do that to the yeah with the upgrade um it's a proxy country you can do whatever the hell you want right. so like we we would just change it to reading from the new stuff for them but that's a giant risk for them too that we can do that yeah <laughs> that's like that's why we're removing that ability um but we can use it now so they don't have to do anything mm -hmm. but that's like when we remove it um in the future when we make another update well that's like well in the future the way that you would do it is like it would sort of be like more of a hard fork similar to like uniswap upgrading so like you had the uni v2 contracts and you started the uni v3 contracts there's nothing to prevent reporters or liquidity providers from staying in the old contract so like okay. you would expect that you know this teller flex contract gets some usage people are reporting on it whether for ample for their liquidity even if people move here if there's still funds over here you can stay here and report on it yeah. so and it would be like more of a slow move over opt-in makes sense i'm just thinking about the tokens that we minted for inflationary rewards to the oracle this is the first time they will actually have to either change the balance of a specific address and transfer. Yeah, but it's like the Oracle contracts. It's, it's, it's different. Um, yeah. Pretty sure we've changed the balance before. Okay, I think we have. Um, what balance are you changing? What? Like the Oracle contract has like time based rewards minted to it directly. So, like, we would have to delete them more. Well, or you can leave them there and it, it doesn't like work. After two years or something, it just like it does run out. So, like, we could leave it in there. But if we're planning on upgrading this year, there's a whole year worth of inflationary oh, so rewards you just cut it off before it runs out. You could freeze it. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Move them into something. Since it's like we don't want all that inflation in the system for something that nobody's using. We would want them sort of move. Yeah, but it's DAO governed funds, right? Sort of. I'm just wondering if, like, moving that would need five percent token approval. Well, I mean, this whole thing would need a five percent token approval. It would all just be part of the upgrade. Oh, you could move them all in one. Yeah, I mean, you would just oh, basically okay. have like it's similar when we move from Teller to Teller X, then it would just everything was done in one giant one proposal. You would just. Okay load up all the changes you want to make and do it in one vote. Oh, and that, you change the address of the inflationary rule which points it. You do everything. Yeah. yeah okay, okay. There would be no so that's the other thing we'd we'd get rid of inflationary rewards, but that's coming up next there in the future. So uh next we would read <laughs> Redo governance. Uh, so we have 25% team reporters, users, token holders. So this would be similar to the polygon governance. Um, now the, the obvious question is is like man well this one sucks we don't want 25 percent of the team um i think that's a temporary thing um the way that we would sort of dowify ourselves and like get away from any reliance on the team would be getting rid of this <laughs> um whether we would want to give it to the token holders more or you could do some sort of delegated structure to say like we go to a contract and yeah so like it's, you know, there's like 10 people, it has like 10 slots and it's just, those are like the 10 sort of, you know, trusted individuals in the system and they, they, they could be voted on for a year, every, you know, year terms or something like that. You could move to some structure to where like you have the, the base token holders, but then you have more of like a team, but voted on team, if you will. Like a board. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I would like something like that in the future. Yeah, that's cool. You no. remove the twenty five percent vote from the team. That means you need twenty five percent more of the token holders to vote the next vote, that kind of thing. 
No, like you just you would so like it's hard the way it's hard coded in like twenty five percent of the vote is the team is the reporters is the users is the token holders. If one token holder votes, he is twenty five percent of the vote. Oh, I see, gotcha. You know, so it's like a fixed weighting system. Um, same with like if one reporter votes, he gets twenty five percent of the vote. Versus if all reporters vote, still twenty five percent of the vote. Um, that way, it sort of balances. Because you would expect, you know, the users would want more inflationary rewards. <laughs> Same with the reporters. Maybe the token holders don't really want that. Um, you know, these guys might be super anti-slashing. These might, guys might be super pro-slashing. And, and that's really where, you know, whenever you're designing a governance system, you want to design it. For checks and balances. Yeah, checks and balances. Like, th th these are competing interests. These are the governance procedure works and that hopefully these people are checking on each other. Um, so um, this would basically be, hopefully it would make it a little bit better. Um, Cause right now, I mean, the I, there's tons of literature out there about why pure token holder voting is bad. You know, A, you sure. can't get anybody to vote, B, big exchanges own a lot. Um, how we move away from that and still give a voice to those people. It's hard. You know, I think you would basically have like, you would expect you know, the election would be basically, you, know, you would have this governance piece do the election every year as well, or like maybe these three would do the elections or so, something like that. But that, that would be like in the future. Like reporters. You could, yeah. Does it affect our measurement of quorum? I mean, you could get rid of quorum with this. Wait, really? So, what do you require? Well, or just require, like, require you, you, yeah, you, you, it would be different for sure. Yeah. I mean, you could just require, like, either 5% of the token holders vote, or if just the team votes, that's also fine, or something like that. For sure. Um, maybe make sure that, you know, at least two of the three, two of the four groups vote. Yeah in something but yeah you could, you could add in some sort of check but um i mean the problem with quorum in a lot of ways like especially ideally we move to whenever we move to this system yeah like what is governance voting on here yeah changing variables well no we, we're, we're moving we're moving away from changing variables the only thing they're voting on is disputes uh, okay. they're going to vote on disputes and then maybe when we get rid of the team they're going to vote on where there's you know who those delegated people are but then there's one other thing that they vote on which is next and that's what to do with some of the tokens um but but basically like it's not like it's not as you know the reason that you have a big quorum now in our system is because because of this piece like you can really fuck up the whole system so yeah. <laughs> you want to make sure there's a whole bunch of people voting on it and a whole bunch of attention going into it like nobody's nobody's sneaking through a vote now um and that's really important so the other piece of governance which i'd like to do for the token holders uh would be snapshot um so we've talked about this we made it it works um you can get a whole lot more participation that way um there is some centralization risks as far as it's not centralization it's more data availability risks um which is yeah, which we're actually working with them on, um, you know, basically like if if they stop keeping track of who voted, like you know, so you could you could even do something like maybe you use snapshot for this, or or you could use it for all the portions, um, or you use snapshot in round one of the votes or something. I don't know, um, but the other cool thing about this would be. For the other chains, is what this would be a big change. This would be one of the few changes on other chains as well to flex. Well, it wouldn't be to flex; it would be to the governance contracts. But that way, like right now, you right now you would have to bridge tokens over to Polygon to vote on Polygon. Now, if you just use Snapshot, it can add up your balances across all the chains. Oh, that's awesome! Which is super cool. Um, and then you don't have to bridge. And that's way better. So, working on that. Okay. Could that query ID become an attack factor as well? 
what the, the Snapchat play is. Yeah, I mean, well, you can just censor it. Yeah. Or, I mean, you could put a wrong result on chain, but hopefully you get disputed. Well, we have wait periods for both, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, That's about. The token. So here's here's other changes. Um, just a token now. So, you know, the main address, it'll have that fallback function for liquidity and ample forth. But then like right now, the contract has staking inside of it on mainnet. Remove that, that all goes over in the flex structure. So like we can, we can chop a whole bunch of our, out of our main contract. We can also chop out checkpoints, makes things a whole lot cheaper, super cool. Um, so no checkpoints or staking. Um, that's super easy, super fun, moving code. Um, next things would be the automated issuance. So we wanna get rid of governance because we don't wanna be able to trash our token value. Um, so how do we have inflation? Well, you would just fix it. This is, you know, the Bitcoin model or whatever. Like I would probably just fix it at, you know, we're at 8K a month now. Like nobody's really complaining too much. Uh, keep it at 8K a month. Um, and then you would have two things that it goes to. So we would do continue the 4K to the team. And then the other 4K right now is going towards inflationary rewards. But we would drop that and this would go to uh, the DAO, basically the governance contract, which would then be able to decide what to do with it. Ideally, we would push people, at least initially, I'm guessing towards auto pay contracts. Um, so you could do it towards auto pay. Um, but say in the future, people are paying and you don't need to use it on auto pay. Um, the cool thing. You could put it towards other things like i don't know like marketing or you know cool music videos whatever you want it's up to the downs yeah grants um but the auto pay piece too the big thing so uh so no um time-based rewards um but the other the other piece would be like, what IDs does it go to? And that's why we time-based reward sucks because it we, we just get ETH USD basically because <laughs> they, they know how to do it and they do it and unless you really force them to, they, they, they're not doing what's actually needed. So we can work with actual users and who do we want to show off that we're using? Who do we want? You know, this is similar to like chain link paying for a user's feed. Now we got some tokens to pay for a user's feed for them. Like, hey, like, man, this project looks awesome. We're going to fund you guys for the next six months through an auto pay contract from our inflationary rewards. You guys need it once a day? Perfect. You know, and, and it sort of becomes like, you know, they, they could make proposals and they could, you know, eventually it would be like presenting to the DAO. Um, so targeted IDs, that's something we would do. And eventually like this for Okay, that's currently going to the team as we dowify ourselves. You could just all go here and then we pay our salaries and whatnot. But so convincing Brenda on this one. <laughs> Get rid of the whole corporate structure. Um, yeah, just, you know, make it fun. So. <laughs> Can you clarify the no staking? No, this is just, right now the staking is done at our token address. The staking will move to be similar to polygons where the staking is done on the Oracle contract. Gotcha. So still staking. Okay. Right, right. Um, obviously if we have automated issuance and we're doing this, uh, no more treasuries, just no way that you can do it without it being an attack vector unless you really like got into automating it. Doesn't seem like we have a whole lot of demand. Nobody's really voting on it. Um, you could, yeah, I mean, you could do something like treasuries with these inflationary rewards would still be an option. So, you know, like we, we're only minting 2,500 this month or for this quarter. So like you could still do the same size treasury with just with these, if it's something that would be. I was going to say so much for people complaining about like, they don't earn rewards, they have treasuries and they didn't even vote on it. Or, you know, even kill them up. Okay. 
So um, another another thing we'll add this into the notes. Uh, sending to contract address or no sending to contracts. So we'll we'll have a way to prevent people sending to the contract, or if they do, we'll just say. Or maybe in like each of the contracts, if it's not supposed to get TRB, like the team can <laughs> send it back to the person or something. Yeah. Um, just some some way that's been requested. Okay, so now um, now the big some of the big changes with regard to auto pay. Auto pay. Um, this is like how you tip. Um, this is the cool thing. So we were planning on a two percent fee, and where does it go? To the reporters on the network. So to staked reporters. So if you are staked, you get this fee. Like a pool. Like a pool. Ah, oh, that's cool. So then if you're just simply staked on that network, so if you're staked on Polygon, you get the rewards from the Polygon auto pay. If you're staked on mainnet, you get the rewards from the mainnet. So it incentivizes people to go over to the various networks where users are. Um, are they still required to vote? Is that yeah, so we could require them to vote. Um, I guess, yeah, you could require them to vote. The voting would probably be limited to being on that chain, votes on that chain. So that's all that would be re readable. Um, but yeah, we could still require them to vote and then you could get some rewards. And then hopefully, you know, if auto pay takes off, obviously there would be some rewards because there's some inflationary rewards. So simply staking, there's going to be some inflationary rewards, and by simply staking, you're going to get a small bit. It's cool. Um, and then as people start tipping, you'll get more. Um, are the rewards based on the number of reporters or the, the amount of stakes? So if, I guess if it's less reporters in one chain, people will probably gravitate towards it versus. Yep. Well, it's reporters per amount. So, like, you know, if there's $100 worth of tips in auto pay, it gets split amongst all the reporters. So if there's only one reporter, he gets all of it. If there's a hundred reporters, he gets one percent of it. Um, and probably on on the networks, it would have to do with the amount that you actually have staked, uh, the number of TRB. So you know, so if you have one address with ten stakes, you would get ten times the rewards. So makes sense. Um, the other thing. We can ask for it. We could do a keeper network. This is a super easy addition. We would just have to build out and tell you it would be probably the hardest part. Um, but it would be similar to auto pay, pay you to run a function at a certain time. So, like the verify and ample forth, or like, hey, at, at noon every day, I want you to send GM to this contract. You could pay the auto pay contract to do that, and the reporters would simply go call that function. Um, it's like sort of something that Oracle, other Oracle networks have sort of do, and that's where people look for keepers. So we're going to run that one. Shouldn't be too difficult once the auto pay stuff's set up, but we'll add that and hopefully it can start driving more fees too. Um, all right. If you want to update the 2% payment, my brother's. Yeah, what if we want to update the 2% payment? So, like, auto pay is something you can just make a new one. Um, you know, so you could you could just make a new one. Hope people probably aren't funding these for years. You know, it's probably like a few months. So, it's slowly empty out of this one and more people fund the new one. Um, the question is always, well, what if somebody makes an auto pay contract that doesn't have a fee? And they're not doing it well you know there, there's not a whole lot you can do to prevent that like they, they could um but like if, if it did become popular you could say like listen like we're gonna vote against it or something you know as a community because against disputes on this one because you guys aren't 
giving back in some way. That's the reason in behind the firing them to vote. Yeah. Um, if they if they vote now the districts, then the research should be sort of like cool. Mm -hmm. Um so tell me it. Um I don't even know if I need to really write much more than we talked about last time. Basically, we're just gonna work on um continuing to make it better. How can we decentralize it more? How can we make more people run it? How can we make how can we make it just a better, faster software? I know a lot is a lot of research I want to do more on disputes, um, how to catch them really fast, how to make sure that we're monitoring for them. A lot of, you know, and how do we make the community do this? So, you know, similar to like running these running telly it shouldn't be something that just like a handful of reporters do we want it we want it to be something where a lot of people are monitoring for disputes and and how we do that i don't know but something we need to think about that and the keeper network will be the big changes for telly it, but i guess relatively small changes to telly it as far as you know versus its its core mission is still kind of the same thing so keeper network is its own that crazy normally you just have like a query id and then like so you have to submit the data that they call that transaction or something it'll be almost identical to the tip listener a crime is building uh, yeah. basically you just listen for a tip on the keeper network and then instead of submitting a value on telly it you run whatever function they called you to do sure. so all right nice. um Lastly, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not even writing anything now, but like messaging slash branding changes, you know, talking about, you know, like we are a DAO here, but we're removing upgradability. We're, we're becoming more and more decentralized. And, and how do we just continue to push that? Like, this is, this is like a software, a network that runs software. Like it's, yeah. it's, it's a piece of computer code that works. It's not, you know, in my mind, moving away from just the idea of like even even being a token as much like yes we're, we're we are still a token but like not not sort of identifying with that as much like it's it's much more like this is you know similar like yeah like I I love that feel with like say like Uniswap or Sushi Swap even like when you think about them you don't think about their token first and foremost um, you know how do we get that feeling teller to you know this is just something people use people can use. Um, and then the big thing we're all just going to be working on. So, you know, as we, as we have time, like, obviously we're going to be making these changes. I'll be honest, we could probably make all of these changes to the solidity code in like a month <laughs> and like really test it and be done with it, but we're going to take it slow. We're going to send it out for audits. You know, it's a great time to check ourselves. Um, the other piece too, we want to work, we want to continue working with users. Any user that comes, we want to make sure that they're taken care of. And I think we're doing a good job at that. Users just move slow too. We're all figuring that out. Um, and then even building our own use cases. The more examples we have out there to show, the more content we have to show people how to do it, making that over time, it's really going to have a compounding effect. You know, if, if somebody Googles, you know, or looks on Stack Exchange, where can I look up a price feed? Or, you know, where, where can I get a snapshot vote? But well, we have something built now. You know, that was such a, it was a great thing Quinton did. Like, you know, it was just like a pet project like I had on that I wanted to do at a hackathon to do snapshot. And then the snapshot team saw it and now we're integrating on their website. Like we, you know, so it's like the more sort of yeah. sample use cases we can build, the more cool pieces that we can build ourselves, um, those are gonna have really good effects over time. So um, if you guys have any great ideas, just know, you know, we want to give you time over, you know, as, as we start buttoning up whatever we have to work on now, hopefully you guys have more time to experiment with these things and, and build the cool stuff um, that you want to. So questions, comments? Guys? Josh. 
Yeah, I had an idea. I don't know if it's stupid or not, but with the uh, monitoring disputes better with the Telliot, would it kind of just like having a check, um, almost kind of like a, um, almost like homework, I guess, for reporters. I don't know if this would be a good thing or a bad thing, but just to try to encourage monitoring disputes better. Like what if there was like a check where in order to continue operating as a reporter in the space, you'd have to like almost like give your check kind of like a GitHub reviewer kind of check on a report, not necessarily like a dispute, but just kind of like a, hey, I'm active, I'm watching your stuff, kind of like a thing. And in order to continue operating in the space as a reporter, you kind of just have to do that like a certain amount of frequency, like in a time period, like a month or something like that. It's easy and to take. How so? What, what are you saying back? I don't know, just kind of like how like you do like a GitHub check where it's just kind of like, okay, this all looks good or whatever report was just valued. Like I can give my stamp or whatever like that, just so that way there's like a extra incentive well, to- It's always like, well, are, are they staked? Could they lose anything for saying wrong? You know, or they'll just- I mean, the, yeah, I mean, the same thing would be, yeah. I guess the same dispute mechanisms and like incentives for those would still be in place, but it's just well, kind of like an extra little- yeah, like, well, this was actually one idea that people have had a, a while that, that we could probably do with some time. So, like, in addition to, like, this would, so, like, you, you could, like, build sort of a chain on it and have, like, the longest chain idea. So, like, if you have, like, you know, price one and then, you know, with, like, and then, like, the next, the next timestamp on price one is, like, price two comma hash of price one and price two and you build like a blockchain out of it right. to where like you're securing this one you approve of this and you're signing off on it and then you know if you didn't yeah. you wouldn't sign off on it um must be hard to read for users though well no i mean you could have this one separated out it would just be, oh yeah you separate but like yeah. you know so like you could build like your own blockchain and that's what some people have done on it the problem is always like you know what's like then then you have like you you get forks to where like this person says no uh this is actually price one now because this was invalid um you know and you, you could potentially get a whole lot of forks and it's we this was one of the original ideas we were looking at but the data storage on the network just got really really big with a whole bunch of forks um but i mean we, we could still explore something like that to where you are it's, Sort of validating past data as you report, um, yeah. but the the question is, it's also hard with tele and price feeds, because like, how much data are you validating? You know, like, you can read the API price from Coinbase now. How hard is it to validate what the price was an hour ago? <laughs> you know, it's it's like you actually need more information to yeah. actually say anything good about it. So versus just say hey, this is the current price. Yeah, there's no like if if like a value is disputed and it eventually was declared like invalid. Right. Then and then is the whole it, chain. You could just have it all reporters lose a little bit. Yeah. So like the longer that was like so like someone disputes it, the longer that that had been on chain without being disputed, Ooh. could like, you know what I mean? Everyone loses more the longer it was on there and then they lose less like the shorter. So then that would be like, we really want to dispute things. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, like we, to be honest, we've had like in the past, like when we've had dispute bugs, like they've been really, really fast to get taken off. And like, I mean, it's funny, you know, like who takes the report, who disputes? Reporters. The reporters and most of the time they dispute themselves because <laughs> they, they want to take it off and then they win either way so like they're like hey i don't know if this was a good value and they pull it off and that first you dispute yourself and then you look to see if anyone else is submitting that because they're, they're using the same api and, <laughs> and then you come on discord and are like hey like can i submit this like i disputed myself five times for the automated report and then you go and you, um, you say i'll give back the standard 75 percent of your stake <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i mean it's it, it's it's a good model honestly like if the reporters are like if they feel questioning about it and they dispute themselves like we, we like that um like i'd rather be cautious about submitting yeah versus anyway um 
Those are just some random ideas. Anything else? Do we have to implement confidence into Delia? Or are we avoiding it? I just wonder. I think we have some. No. But like the disputable values monitor has like a confidence yeah. threshold. How does Delia work? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have a yeah, we'll have a Telia to walk through at some point too. How does it work now? Black box. I have no well, I think you're gonna redo the repos here over the next month or so and like sort of change some of the structures. So maybe after after that you guys can give us all a walkthrough. Yeah. The code. And it's basically just like a wrapper for anything that our users use like on the contracts. So like make it easier to like generate query IDs and whatnot. Okay. Like you know, the type what type of data you just want to I wanna start from like before we used to have each miner used to have its own database. Is it one and then they all use it? Or, or there's no database. It, so how does okay? So from we'll explain it later. This there, is a different I call, need, Brenda. I need it from there to like how you, everything. Yeah, sure. Um, anything else, guys? It's good. All right, cool. All right, we'll find we'll push these out to the community. Um, we'll probably finalize them and then probably in mid-May, whoever has some free time gets to work on some of these changes with me. <laughs> um, like I said, I, th I think they're going to be quick solidity changes. Yeah. Um, you know, we we're pretty quick with it. We're, we're moving to Tellerflex. I think some of the hard, the, probably the longest piece of any of the coding is going to be the snapshot implementing um, in the governance contracts. But I That'll be it. Um, the rest is a lot of removing code and then just testing. So awesome. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. Everyone have a great